right, so the topic of our talk is going to be the art of real thinking with iRuby notebook. Um, I'm briefly going to discuss iRuby, which is a REPL environment for Ruby. Uh, then I'm going to demo some stuff with it, then I'm going to demo some stuff with Rails. And then we'll be time for questions. So before I start, I just want to see a show of hands. How many people here have used Pride? IRD? Rails console? Good, pretty much everyone. And uh, how many people have, here have used IPython? IPython notebook? Okay, a couple. And really out there, anyone here use iRuby? None. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, to really talk about iRuby, we have to start with IPython, which is where it started. Uh, back in 2001, there was this uh, scientist, Fernando Perez, he's a physicist, and he was working on Python, and he was work working in its uh, redevelopment print loop, and it wasn't satisfactory to him, so he pulled a bunch of scripts together to make it better. And this kind of evolved for many years, until in 2009, the back end and the front end of the REPL was split, and this allowed a rich GUI front end written in QT and a Python back end. And they could display graphs and whatnot in this environment. And uh, this split allowed a couple of years later to create the notebook, which is a web uh, environment where there's a website, you type your code in there, send it over to the Python controller, which then sends it over to the Python kernel, and uh, the Python kernel evaluates it and returns the result. And uh, this architecture allowed the plugin in a multiple of kernels. So first and afterwards, they created an R backend for it, and also a Ruby backend for it, which is the one I'm going to be talking about. Uh, so the Ruby backend uh, is only a couple of years old, and it's not really that much used. It's currently maintained by Daniel Mendler, and it could either run Cry or IRP, which uh, what most of you have used. Um, and, I'll, and I'm going to demo it. So the demo I'm going to do in the style of uh, uh, Julia Child, who, who wrote uh, the art of uh, French cooking back in the 60s. And, the way, and she also was a TV chef. And the way she worked was that she would have some prepared food and some food that she's working on raw, and she would swap them out to speed things up. And much of the stuff I'm going to try to emulate, hopefully. So I'm going to start a uh, Ruby console, uh, I Ruby Noble console, fully large. Uh, this is what it looks like. I can just uh, execute arbitrary Ruby code in here. Uh, unlike a regular uh, IRP or Pi session, instead of having individual lines executed, it's divided into cells and you can uh, write cells and then execute them out of order. So, so I can do something like, like this, and then uh, it will be available to me in any other cell, in this case, a previous cell. Uh, it also inherits the features of Cry. So for example, uh, I can do stuff like uh, tab completion. It also has uh, multi-line cells, so I can do things like and then it'll execute that. Uh, this is actually pretty helpful when you're doing something and you want to execute a Rails console right here first and copy into Rails console. Uh, so that's not really the best way of working with Rails. And uh, to that end, I created something called iRails, which I'm going to demo. 
Uh, but first, uh, I'm going to demo something that I, uh, I kind of alluded to earlier, the rich content. So, uh, I, you may have guessed that this presentation is actually a notebook itself. And uh, this image of Julia Child here is just an opening of a JPEG file using uh, Ruby. And then uh, I, Ruby Notebook is smart enough to get the file handle and figure out that it should be displayed as an image. Uh, and all the previous text I have here are actually uh, iRuby cells, but instead of executing Ruby code, they're executing uh, Markdown. So if we went back to Markdown to display, I can uh, convert them to I can convert them to Ruby code, in which case they will fail for syntax reasons. Back to Markdown. All right. Um, the reason this doesn't look quite like our iRuby notebook is because I executed this piece of HTML code here that's hiding the iRuby navbar, and then we comment that out. We'll get the navbar back. Um, all right. So for Rails. So this isn't quite polished, so right now I need to load it in this weird way. I'm working on a gem to get us working, but essentially what this does is it loads the Rails console in the IPython notebook. So I started this notebook in the in the demo rail started sorry guys to Rails uh, uh, guide. So I know that simple blog with articles and text and whatnot. So, so hopefully the so this makes the models available just as you would expect them to be in a Rails uh, environment. But this does something more. So besides just being able to manipulate the the models. You can also work with the views. So, okay. so welcome slash index is a Rails view. And uh, I'm going to try to execute it. Good. And now we can actually <coughs> execute it as HTML. Now it renders perfectly within the cell. <coughs> uh, we can do more complicated things like uh, article slash index is a more complicated view. Uh, let's try to render that. So it fails because it says undefined method each for now. We actually articles index. So if we actually look at this, I hope you can. I can't zoom in any further, but as you can see here, this requires this uh, add articles to be present. So we can just uh, include that in locals, which is not really local, but it works. There we go. Now we have HTML, and that's, uh, let's render that. So now we have a view that appears in the notebook. Uh, I, I, I use this several times to work with the views that we have in our production app to get them uh, up to scratch. Mostly not with rendering full views, but just uh, partials when I want to pull in everything from the controller and like, all the other stuff. 
it works pretty well. So that's it for the demo. I guess I'll show you how to actually start this up. So let's, uh, let's go back to the dashboard where all the notebooks are available. Close them. So this is running uh, from the console. So once you have the IOV gem, you can just uh, type a Ruby notebook. It will open the console, it will show you the dashboard where all the notebooks that you've been working on are available. And we're going to return to the notebook. Start it up. Uh, these uh, notebooks are saved as files on the disk. So you can commit them to source control or remove them because they're kind of ephemeral, I feel like. Uh, you can mail them around. You can uh, share them with other people via the MD viewer. Uh, if this interests you, I have some instructions on how to actually uh, get this working. Uh, the instructions for getting iRuby working are available on the iRuby GitHub. And then to making iRuby work with iRails is somewhat available at the handybook slash iRails website. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, in the back. When you develop day to day, do you have uh, iRails notebook open, or is this like just <coughs> I definitely have the iRails notebook open. My usual workflow with it is uh, investigating the models that we have and doing uh, multi-line queries on them, and and then going from there. Though occasionally I do use the views functionality as well. Uh, Enrico? Um, how does the, you said that it, it saves the data to a local file. How does the file save to like Marshall or Marshall? So, great question. So the file that's saved locally is a JSON file, and it keeps track of all the source code in a, in a single field, and then it also keeps track of the output. Uh, if any, like for example, in this line, uh, true is an output, and we keep track of that. In the case of the image, it uh, it hex encodes it and stores it as a big blob. What capabilities does the iRuby have that iPython doesn't have? Or vice versa? What capabilities iRuby have? Yes. Okay. So iRuby uh, has the ability to run Ruby code. That's the biggest capability. Otherwise, I'd say it's uh, at this stage inferior because there's a lot of effort put into iPython and not a lot into iRuby. It's mostly just a couple of guys working on it once in a while. But even then, it's very fully featured. Uh, having, uh, having pride working, it gives it a lot of capabilities. So, um, for example, I can. Can you visualize data inside Ruby? Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat that? Can you visualize data inside Ruby? Because I have some notebook to see class. Right. So, you can visualize data. Uh, there's a few standard uh, libraries that are capable of doing that. Uh, but I have, uh, I believe, a new plot. Uh, works with the iMovie notebook, and then there's a few others, and uh, you can also render like latex code into iMovie notebook. You can render uh, a few other things as well. I can actually, I can actually show you that. So this is a, from the standard iRuby notebooks example, which I didn't write, but this is latex code, and it's being rendered as latex out. Uh, and you can also do some fancy things with tables, uh, try, I don't know what our magic is. Uh, so new plot works. 
Uh, in this case, it's not working because I don't have new plot installed. But if you have new plot installed, it will render it properly. Well, it's it on the library, right? So like, if you're taking two different libraries, they're going to have different performance character, characteristics themselves. Uh, as a library front end, person I have a front end, there was really no overhead. And this library front end is pretty much the same one, the stock iPython front end that has a few other features. So like all of, like all the messaging over the uh, zero queue still goes at the same speed. So it's just a matter of is new plot slower than uh, math plot would or not? Or, or a grammar for graphics or something like that. Uh, and back? So uh, it's running in your browser, but you can't really access it from outside your machine. So is Ruby evaluated in the browser? Excuse me? Uh, Ruby is not, so the question is, is Ruby valid in the browser? It's not, so uh, the Ruby code gets uh, packaged up and then gets sent to the iPad control, which then sends over to the key to the Ruby kernel. But the, the Python controller only allows access to the web front from the local machine. You can actually, so you can't really access from other places. If you want to do that, there's some uh, switches you can flip in the background to make it available to more than just zero to that zero dot zero dot zero dot zero, but that involves some work, and then you can set a password on it. So, so I'm sorry. Uh, what happens if you uh, try to ask is Ruby access? If I ask it to excuse me, what? Ruby access on that kernel Uh, it, it may. Uh, okay, so my machine went to sleep. <laughs> but even if it crashes the kernel, you can restart it right away. Uh, and I can. If I had the screen working, I can demonstrate perhaps crashing it. Although well, <coughs> it's not really clear to me when it crashes, it does sometimes. But restarting is very quick. Um, I actually don't know how to cause it to crash on purpose, but we can restart it on purpose. Ah. There we go. So that just restarted the kernel, and now it's back up again, and we can execute code again. Uh, sorry, can you, no, can you try access? Yeah, sure. Let's see if we're still alive.
So this is a uh, I will be running from internal I will be running from internal and it looks exactly like you would expect IPython from internal to look like. Uh, I'm I'm not really quite sure what the advantage of this is over Prodi because all the really cool features that are are in Python in IPython are actually missing from here and are implemented by Prodi. Or IRP. Thank you.